Hi, my name is João and I'm the Chief Engineer at Arda Recorders. Welcome to our studios. Arda Recorders is a six studio complex based in the center of Porto, Portugal. It was founded in 2017 and we spent the next three years building this six studio complex from the ground up. We have three tracking studios, studio A, B and C, two mixed rooms and a mastering studio. We also have five production rooms, offices and a small cafeteria where people can hang out. This is Studio A, it's the biggest studio at our recorders. It was designed with tracking in mind, although people use it for mixing from time to time. This studio is based around the vintage Neve 8068 desk. Those desks are really special, so I remember the first time I recorded something through the desk, just pulling the feathers up, kind of feel something weird, in a good way, of course. It really makes everything sound bigger and solid. Those desks are pretty rare nowadays. I mean, it's, they're, they're old, so uh, sometimes you get desks that aren't in very good working order. We're very proud that our desk is completely functional, so it gets used every day. Uh, and every time someone hears this desk for the first time, I, you can actually see their expression change, which is really cool. Since this studio was built with tracking in mind, we also have a lot of options when it comes to preamps, compressors and EQs. Our idea was to give the engineers all the options they need and all the colors they might want uh, while they're tracking. In the studio, we also track the tape a lot, so we have several tape recorders that we can use. Although it's an old school format of some sorts, people still like it. It's really a different way of working. The studio has a main tracking space with around 100 square meters and also three ISO boots with perfect lines of sight between each other. In this room, we do all kinds of recordings. We can do bands, we can do orchestras, we can do jazz ensembles, we can do pretty much everything. And we've done it all in the past few years. This room can also accommodate stage lighting uh, and has video tie lines between all the rooms. And nowadays it's pretty common that people bring cameras to recording sessions, so we try to make it easy for them to capture that moment and to film as well. One of the interesting things about this studio is that we have an actual echo chamber that was built adjacent to the main tracking space. Even though it's a bit uncommon these days, we really feel it adds something to the recordings. We can use it uh, as a complement to the main tracking space, so we leave the door open and just put microphones in there, or we can use it during mix time, so by feeding a signal to a speaker and micing that up, uh, we get this natural reverb that it can really emulate with any plug-in or machine. We also have old-school effects like a plate reverb, spring reverb, all that stuff that you can find in the computer nowadays. We feel it's a bit different to use actual machine, and it brings something to the table when it comes to mixing and tracking. The main room is pretty big, but the acoustics are very controlled. We designed it that way so it was easier for us to get bands together in the same room without having all the nasty spill and too much reverberation. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to get great sounds in this room, so you just get a good source, throw a mic in front of it and it's there. All the rooms in this building are connected with tile lines, uh, so we can record pretty much anywhere, be it from the cafeteria, bathrooms, <laughs> uh, entrance, everything. We have a pretty big microphone collection, around 200 microphones, I guess, that the engineers have been collecting over the years. Uh, we have choices for pretty much everything, and since they're shared between all the recording studios, we kind of need to have all lots of options. We have everything you need to do a great record. Hello, my name is Carlos Fuchs, and I've been a recording engineer for the past 30, oh my God, five, six years. Um, and I'm here to tell a story about this piano, this lovely Fazioli F278. Um, we were in the process of planning the studio back a few years ago, and I was trying to convince Juan that we needed a very, very special piano. And um, I found online this piano on a little shop in Verona, Italy. So I invented a family trip to Italy. Uh, invited my father, which is a brilliant classical pianist himself. At the same day, we went to the Fagioli factory, actually, in Sacchili. If you compare to manufacturers like Steinway Pianos, which is a great one also, uh, who makes 5,000 pianos a year, Fagioli on only makes 150, because it's all handmade. Everything takes a long time with, uh, with so perfect craftsmanship. And at the moment I touched the piano, I knew that was it. It was really, really welcoming sound. The mechanics was, was perfect. The piano was in li like new condition, 
but was already open the sound because it was already played and everything. So it was the perfect, uh, the perfect um, catch for our studio. We got it. So we, we are very happy with this. Studio B is our medium-sized tracking studio. It's based a 32-channel Rupert Neve Designs 5088 console that sounds amazing for all kinds of music. The live room is super flexible. We can do all kinds of recording in there, uh, from drums, bass, guitars, string ensembles, uh, small jazz trios. I think we've done it pretty much everything in that room. It also has a small booth in the sound lock that we can use to play samps. So we have separation between those rooms while we're tracking live bands. So for the control room, it shows different flavors of preamps, compressors, EQs. So we have a lot of tools that the engineers can use to craft their records in here. Uh, it's a very cozy studio and has great lines of sight between the control room and the main room. So bands usually love to record in here. Dolby Atmos for music is a relatively new standard. It's been picking up a lot of traction lately. Our Atmos setup uh, was put together by Dolby Specs, so it's pretty accurate and it's really easy to get yourself immersed while you're mixing, which is a very new experience for engineers that have been doing stereo mixes for so long. The good thing about Atmos is that you don't need to have all the speakers at home to feel the immersion. You can actually hear it on regular headphones. Hey, I'm Gomez. I moved my studio, Orgon Studios, from the UK uh, this year to Arda in Porto. I'm very happy to be here. It's a fantastic studio and I'm going to show you around this amazing corridor where we have all our backline or most of it. Lots of kind of random guitars to do like weird sounds because most people bring here their own kind of stuff. So we just have like a combination of some really useful stuff and some really weird stuff just for fun. A very important studio manager's office. Those guys coolest dudes here. Um, bunch of keyboards, uh, most of them I don't know what they do. I'm not so much of a keyboard guy. I know the uh, kind of classic synths, but we have some pretty cool stuff here. This one's great, I like that one. Um, this is kind of more my thing because I'm a drummer. Uh, so I brought a lot of my stuff uh, from the UK here, actually all my stuff. And combined, I think we have a very, very cool selection of uh, drums. Everything like from super heavy bell brass, super loud snares to classic, you know, vintage Ludwigs. This one was uh, apparently was, it was Dave Grohl's. And then this is another part that I find very fun. It's a uh, guitar amp because I love guitar sounds as well. Roland just chorus, um, classic clean amp, nothing else matters, Metallica, that amp. AC30, um, the Who amp. <laughs> Marshall, I love Marshall amps. Uh, they actually made this uh, for me as, a, as an endorsement and thank you for working with them. We used to work with them very near uh, my Oregon studios in the UK. So we had a very, we still have a very good relationship. This is like the British invasion here, <laughs> kind of, apart from this guy. Um, but yeah, love Marshall, I love British amps. Um, and then we move on to like more high gain amps. Then we have more drums uh, for again, different applications. And uh, yeah, some custom made uh, Dunnet stuff, more classic, you know, Yamaha 9000 stuff. Going into vintage Ludwigs, some weird other like Gretsch kind of stuff and yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's like, it's like fucking Disneyland for recording here, really. So I'm very happy to be here. This is Studio C. It's our overdub room. 
Uh, we designed this room to be able to do small recordings of like vocal tracking, uh, small instruments, so clients don't need to book the big rooms to finish their, their productions. Well, there's a lot of different flavors in terms of preamps and dynamic processors. It's a very comfortable room where people spend a lot of time usually just tracking or either producing or rearranging their songs. It's also used as a production room, so often artists come in just to rewrite parts and work on their music. They have the advantage of being able to use all the backline we have in the facility, so it's quite inspiring to be able to use all the different instruments and different uh, gear we have to create their music. This room is also used for mixing. Uh, it's a very good alternative to the more expensive, bigger rooms we have. The monitoring system uh, is super accurate, so if people are on a smaller budget, they can use this room just to put up the finishing touches on their mixes or just listening back to stuff they work at home. Hello, my name is Miguel. I'm one of the mastering engineers here at Art Recorders. This is the room where me and Clara do most of the mastering jobs. And this was a purposely built room for put the finishing touches on all the records. So the main feature of this room is our uh, big ATC speakers. They are flush mounted in a, in a fully loaded spring system. They have no mechanical connection uh, with the wall and they are completely full range and all the room was designed with these speakers in mind, uh, so we can make sure that we have the most accurate representation of the records we're working on. Along with the speakers, we took great care in choosing the gear that's in this room. We wanted to have a lot of flexibility in our chain, so most of the gear has dual purpose or more than one sound to it, so it can go from a very clean sounding chain with no transformers, no tubes, or we can do the opposite and add a lot of tubes, transformers and saturation to any track we're working with. For instance, we have our passive stereo equalizer, which has a dual stage output, so it can do both tubes and solid state on the same machine, or the same with our world converters. We can selectively add transformers in and out, depending on what we're working on. At our studio, we can master from tape to tape, pretty much all digital mediums, and we also do a lot of vinyl mastering, so we pretty much can handle any format that's used uh, these days. In this room, we also do a lot of audio transcription jobs, restoring digital formats like vinyl, tape, and even older digital formats like that, say that's 1630s. We can do all of that here as well. Even though most of our mastering sessions are done uh, remotely, the room is uh, quite big and very comfortable for musicians to attend in, which is very fun because it's the first time that they can get to listen to the album in its entirety. That's always fun to do. Hello, uh, welcome to Mix Room 2. My name is Zenando Pimenta and uh, I make records. Uh, this is my personal mixing room at other recorders. I have uh, all my gear here. This room is very important because uh, there's a big difference in having a, a treated room. I can actually hear what I'm doing, which is always nice. And uh, besides that, all the team makes sure that I'm comfortable while I'm making my records, and it works really well. I spend a lot of time in Studio A recording bands, uh, or Studio C or B also, and when I'm not doing that, I'm here. I use this room for also to produce, uh, we can listen to takes, uh, we can even record some, some stuff here. And to mix, which I really love to do. This is uh, definitely the, the best room I've ever mixed in.
So we're in mix room one. Uh, this is uh, my private mixing studio. It was the last room we built here in the in our recorders, so it has the advantage of having a small private lounge where clients can hang out while I mix their songs. Uh, it's heavily based on analog gear that I still use. It's some, some stuff I've been collecting over the past almost 20 years. So I still find the need to use it uh, on the mixes I do, although it's pretty much based in the, in the, in the, on the computer nowadays. Uh, but there's still a lot of analog stuff involved in the mixes I do. The studio is based around 64 channels of conversion uh, that allows me to have everything patched and just recall it with every Pro Tools session. There are some old stuff I've been collecting over the years. There's some new stuff like the Undertone Audio and Fresh Shell that I use on every mix I do. Um, but it's a, it's a blend between stuff that's new, old, uh, cheap, expensive, uh, whatever it takes to get the mix going. It's cozy, but it's the acoustics are pretty spot on. Uh, so you can really hear everything you do in this room, especially with a good monitoring system. It's very easy to get good mixes going in this room. We have an amazing team of people working inside this, these studios. Uh, there's staff engineers, mastering engineers, uh, and also the studio managers. They make sure everything runs smoothly in every session. When clients come in, one of our goals is to make them forget everything about the outside world so they can focus on just the music. I hope you enjoy the tour, and we'll see you soon here at Target Recorders.